Hello everybody and welcome back to some King Hunt. <laughs> how, how are you Sophie today? I'm good, thank you. As usual. I'm looking forward, forward to uh, Kaspalov. Yes, we have, uh, probably we won't be able to see everything. Probably you will have already seen some of the games. If you know them well, just like see them uh, for fun mm -hmm. uh, quickly. Uh, about the Twitch, uh, as usual, our name is for now wrong. Uh, we are looking at games of Kasparov today. So sorry about that. For if uh, you guys were here to see Svidler, sorry, <laughs> no Svidler today. It's us looking at uh, Deadly King Hunts. Maybe someone will help us out and change the title. Um, yeah, let's let's start. No, I think uh, everybody's here. Hope everything's fine on YouTube as well. Yeah, and I can let's... see if you're saying hi in there as well. Yeah. Okay, let's dive in. Yes. I thought we would start with a snack. <laughs> with a snack? Uh, with a snack, yes. Just some uh, um, games that are famous. Very, very yeah. famous. Highly famous. But um, they are... Uh... I don't know them. But they are a lot of fun, so I think uh, we should still take a, a quick look at them. Yes. So here it's... Uh, sorry, I was just checking out the Twitch. Um, here it's just... Uh, it's why to play. Let's try to find a way to continue. And uh, it looks like we are going to get our title change. So hold on one second oh, while you this. while you think. Just gonna type this right quickly here. Okay. So I can just talk a little bit about this position. I'm not sure if I've seen it before. Maybe I have. Uh, I really like these bishops on b2 and uh, and d3 and i think that they could cause some harms to black's position yeah um my first thought is actually going d5 mm -hmm. because okay i would really like to play queen e4 uh but of course that would be losing the queen so i'm not interested in doing that but something yeah. like playing uh d5 and then if he takes that then going Queen e4, threatening checkmate, and but, but, if he But there is still something on, there is still something on d5, Sophie. <laughs> There's a pawn. Oh, oh that's <laughs> embarrassing. Okay, yeah, that's true. I need it to work on my because... uh, like visualization. <laughs> because there was the okay. bishop and now it's the pawn. It's it happened. Yeah, no, it's pawn <laughs> still good. not. I just imagine it was a white pawn, but no, you're right. That was uh, okay. Um, then there's like the slower plan about moving the bishop and going queen d3, but I don't really like that so much because then c4 is also, you can maybe take and c4 with the queen if I move the bishop. Um, no, you're actually right about d5 because you also want to open that bishop on b2. Yeah. So it's like a multi-purpose. Okay, so once he takes, then I just have to find something else. That, yeah, it's uh, not queen e4, but queen you do have... E4. Okay, um, could I sacrifice something? Maybe it would work to take an h7 because I have the other bishop. Hmm. Let me just look into that. If I take here and he takes back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there are people trying to help us out in the chat, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I, it looks like it's not working. Um, oh, is it helping with the Twitch title? Yes. I'm see. Okay, I can see Harris is also suggesting d5. Um, d5, e takes d5, c takes d5. Yeah. Um, and if bishop takes d5, then taking on h7. Oh, okay, so we have exactly. to take back first one time. Yes. So that's the right. Oh. This is a famous game against Portish. Uh, you m maybe you will recognize it after everything uh, f drops here c takes d5 and this is what he played bishop takes d5 this is how the game went and bishop takes h7 
Uh, and then we take on, on d5 next? Yes, then we take on d5. And the point is that now the king is slightly open and then all your pieces will will get on the king side. So here he goes king mm -hmm. to g8, which makes makes sense because you don't really want your king on the h file. But what do we do next? <laughs> yeah, the wrong title is a feature on my streams here on Chess24 because on my Twitch I usually <laughs> I can handle it. <laughs> but here Twitch is not my friend. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> have to be nicer to them I feel like it should be something more um, explosive that, than what I'm looking at but I'm looking at something like rook h5 and maybe queen e4 going to the h7 square but it's a little bit slow maybe we could take on g7 that would be <laughs> a way to speed up things but I'm not really sure if it's working because if he takes, we don't have uh, rook g5. I think both no, moves, uh, think both ideas uh, are fine. You are looking at two very strong ideas. Uh, bishop takes g7 is the most forcing, the capture. But then there's also rook h5, as you are pointing out, because it makes yeah. sense to bring everybody to the king side and use the h file. And actually, after rook h5, you might also want to take on g7. Mm. So rook h5 and bishop g7 and then bring uh, more pieces could work. But of course, Kasparov went for bishop g7. Yes, Kasparov. <laughs> bishop takes g7 and then yeah. let's see how this goes. No, king g7. Yeah. And now we have to play something maybe like a quiet move. <laughs> but how quiet? No, because you've how just quiet? sacrificed the bishop. You have to create some threats though. Yes, of course. Um, knight h4 could be an idea. Uh, queen. Okay, so it's just <laughs> if there are any good checks, because if we go with something like queen b2, mm. Oh, he can't actually play a bishop f6 because of rook g5. Yeah, that's that's true. But he can probably play f6. Oh, then I can still play rook g5. But you, I was thinking queen c3. Oh, might queen be c3. Annoying. Yeah, queen c3. That's the way to go in between. Okay. So, not that. What else have we got? Yeah, I was looking a little bit at this move and saying that if he takes, then I can go queen g4 and and um, either take this uh, bishop next move or even play uh, rook h5. Mm -hmm. But okay, you got the idea yeah. because you do want to play queen g4. Uh, I'm wondering if knight sure. h4 does. So, so we want to go. The knight should go to e5 instead. Knight e5. Knight, knight e5, okay. Knight e5. It's, um... But I'm curious, knight h4, how do we stop that? Because you're saying that if I take, you want queen g4. But maybe... Okay, this is starting to look a lot like one of the exercises we were solving on Friday, Sophie, with rookie one. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, queen I g4, remember that. King that F6. was the first one, wasn't it? I think the first one, yes. Yeah. So knight, knight h4 takes queen g5, there is king f6. But then we can take an h4, h4 with a check, but I mean, of course, yeah, we're down king a piece. Yeah, king e6 does not, not look good. So what happens on knight h4? Let's see this, this line. There's also rook h8, I was wondering. Uh, knight h4, queen f4. Yeah, I was thinking about something just queen f4, queen f4. No, but knight f5 on queen f4 still. Because I'm defending. Uh, I have the rook to defend me. But how about I just... I was also thinking, what if I try to get my king out? Something like rook h8 here. To play king f8. Knight f5, king f8. 
Yeah, maybe that's... Still looks dangerous, but at least yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm flying. I'm fleeing from there. But knight a5 is, uh, is the best move. And the idea is very strong. You want queen to g4 and then rook d3 and rook h3. Yep. Very subtle also. Yeah. It's funny. Do you but I like to... knight e5 because even though it's kind of blocking the rooks, uh, uh, fifth rank. It's also blocking the queen's, the black queen's diagonal. True. Yeah, that's and a good I point. Kind of like that. Yeah. And I think we also create threats of rook d7 at some point. No. Yeah. Something like that. It's a good point. So black goes rook d8 here. Queen gets in. And queen f5. There's also f7 now. Yeah, that would be checkmate. <laughs> that would be checkmate. He plays f6. I don't think there's anything else because um, knight d7 is, is going to happen. Uh, I'm just thinking, what if the bishop uh, moves away? Like, take here, I think knight d7. And then if rook take, rook takes, and it's yeah. winning. Yeah. That's actually what kind of happened in the game as well, knight d7. And here he has to take because any other moves lose. King e8 is just made right away. Mm. And king f7 is made in a few more moves. Queen h7. Oh, this was a funny line, so I'm going to show it. <laughs> this is a yeah, funny king I, height. I, I, yeah. And now rook e1. And then queen d3. Queen no, e4. queen there. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, that's a nice because one. Because you don't want the king running to c6. No. If you play queen d3, king c6, and he hides on b7. But on queen e4, <laughs> this is checkmate here in the middle of the board. It's a very nice one. Yeah, a true king hand here. This did, did not uh, happen in the game, but I really liked it when I analyzed the game. Rook takes d7, happened, and now rook takes. Not trading the queens, of course. Rook c7. Another check here. And now rook d3. Very beautiful idea of uh, passing the rooks now, uh, the rook now to the h file, maybe. Yeah. Knight c4, and he plays rook d1. Another check. Now, if king f8, there is an idea with rook d8, and that's mate. Ah, yeah. So, not there, not to e8, because queen g8 is still mate. Yeah, it looks like... Yes. Looks like queen to g8 is still mate here. And then rook d8, bishop f8, rook d8, is that it? So he has to go to e6? I think so, or queen e6. So he has to then go to e6. Then it's becoming a true king hand. Yeah, there he goes. <laughs> queen g8 check. King f5, g4. Ooh. <laughs> Famous game. This must be so much fun to play. I think <laughs> so, <like> yeah. <laughs> Satisfying. <laughs> check, check, check. But yeah. you do have to give the right checks, though. Yeah, of course. Afterwards, it could become a very, very bad experience. <laughs> Imagine if you get mated yourself here with the king on a three. It, it has <laughs> happened. King helping out mate the opponent's king. And I yeah. think here, okay, on king f3, uh, black resigned, but this was the point. I, I just played the moves here. So you see the mate, queen e4, and this is how the game could have ended. Queen e3 and checkmate. <laughs> Very convincing checkmate. Very convincing checkmate. A very <laughs> convincing king hand. Yes, very much. This was almost almost made it to the other side of the board. Yeah, just one one more square. Maybe you could yeah. we could have tried with something like rook d2. <laughs> yeah. So okay, this was Kasparov Portish. Um, if you have not seen this game, well, you definitely have to add it to your collection. Uh, yes, I should. I 
She loves the collection. Games. Eh? My collection, you're making my collection now. <laughs> <laughs> also, I can see on uh, YouTube, I can see um, the 7 p.m. Love is asking for advice to become a grandmaster in chess. Uh, and that is not something uh, I can, I think you're asking me, and I, that's not something I can currently do um, <laughs> because I'm pretty far from being a grandmaster. You can ask somebody who is a grandmaster. I'm sure they can give you some advice. But I and think I don't uh, have hard to... work is always the uh, the, yeah. <laughs> the solution work, to that. Model games, puzzles. Uh, yeah, learning from people who are grandmas, just like Kastawa here, right? Yeah, yeah. for example. Um, this is Kasparov. Yes, there was a question on Twitch. This is Kasparov Games. Uh, we only look at his games. Uh, we saw the game against Portish. But, and now we're going to see another famous game against uh, Karpov in one of uh, their matches. This was played in Lyon. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it, there is actually a, a very good video of Kasparov explaining this game. If you just type on YouTube, Kasparov Leon uh, match versus Karpov, uh, he will show up. Uh, and he shows this beautiful combination over a, a wooden board. It's a footage from, from the actual match. And what I have here, the lines, I decided to include what he shows uh, in the video just to show what he was calculating during the game because I thought that's more impressive than actually showing you what the engine says here. So what do we do here with white? If you have not seen this, Sophie, I will give you the pleasure of finding the first move. If I have seen it, I have forgotten it and I don't think it's a game you should forget. <laughs> I don't think I have seen this one, no. Um, oh, what are we supposed... Again, he has a really good bishop pair. That's something... Uh, he uh, he's good at getting like those bishops just shooting towards the black king. And also like we have so many, it really looks like all the pieces are perfectly lined up for starting some attack. It's just how to start it. <laughs> okay, do we have any checks? We could take on g7, that's a check at least. But okay, bishop takes g7. Then he's still protecting h6 very well, g7, mm. no. Uh, Krungs1990 is pointing out, uh, saying that he saw the video and there's something similar to what you were so saying, Sophie, that all the pieces are pointing at the king. That's actually what Kasparov says in the video. He says, why is this winning? Because I have seven pieces attacking and you have uh, six defenders. <laughs> so that's basically winning here. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't even yeah, have to calculate. <laughs> said this must work. work. <laughs> um, that would, if I had this, if I was lucky enough to have this position in a game, I would definitely think, okay, this should be winning, but just how? Um, there's something about h6 that I keep looking at. Yeah, because it's um, it's only it looks like it's protected twice or even three times because of the bishop at f8, but it's only protected one time because the g pawn is, is pinned. Mm -hmm. um, so there's something there that I'm trying to make work. So uh, let's go with not... your intuition then. Okay, so I'm going to take an h6 and assume that he takes back with the book. Otherwise, yes. it's just uh, nothing. And then after he takes with the book, we can maybe take on g7, but it's very, we're sacrificing a lot of material in this line. So I have to be a little bit careful. We could also go queen g4. That would be the more uh, like patient move, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure if we can be that patient once we all, if, if we always sacrifice one yeah, piece. Yeah, you have to be energetic here. So, okay. We could take with, I don't know. I don't know if it if it even uh, makes a difference, but we could take with some pieces here on g7. We could also consider moving the knight. I'm sorry, I have yeah. to stop. Like you so have... many things to consider. 
uh, let's say we take it a is G7. a complicated position yeah forcing and he takes back and we take back and that's a check and then king takes then then what then we could bring the queen in queen g4 and the king has to be a little bit careful because if he steps to like if he goes to h7 we could probably <laughs> You're getting king lost in on the arrows. Yeah, king h7. I have so many arrows right now. Um, king h7, you want the knight f6. Was that it? You want to get uh, the check? King h7, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think knight f6 because it's a it's a double check mm -hmm. and it's and I can take the queen next move if if, if nothing else. Um, but so I the think question he is, can cover like in that position something like rook g6 maybe. You mean after I take twice in g7 and play queen, queen g4? g4? Yeah, in that position. And then g6. g6. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. that is what I would be afraid But of. here, what you were talking about moving the knight is possible. And Kasparov showed that here he was planning to play knight d6. Uh. Attacking the queen. Yes. And here, uh, black has various moves. And let's see the ones that he analyzes in the video to show you the lines. He actually said that he didn't calculate this. He saw knight h6 and he just played it here <laughs> because I have so many pieces attacking and he has some defending. <laughs> so I'm yeah. basically, what he was trying to say that he's giving up an attacker for a defender. So the ratio is always the same. And it's always best when you have more pieces attacking and he has less defending. Mm. Very instructive uh, ideas. Knight d6. And here let's start with uh, queen h5. Because here on queen h5, he was going to go for rook g5. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a nice little because, detail. Because knight f7 uh, is there, no? Uh, there are some yeah. ideas here. So he has two moves here. If queen takes g5, there's knight f7. And mm. gets the queen back. And if queen takes d1, there's still knight f7. King g8. Take here first with check. The pawn still pinned. And then he takes the rook. And here he showed that if c3, because this is a move that you have to see, uh, this pawn looks dangerous. But here knight f7. <laughs> and here he shows this line, bishop g6. And creating a mating net around the king. If black takes the, the bishop, rook h5, black can't avoid the mate on h8. Yeah, that's very nice uh, check mating pattern. So he said that he worked out this line while Karpo was thinking. So after playing knight h6 confidently, <laughs> <laughs> uh, try and see what black can do here. He also said that black can take on e1. But then takes on e1, rook d6, and queen e4. To threaten queen h7 mate, knight d3 to stop it. And now the queen gets in here. And it's funny that rook h6 never works because he will just take it. This pawn is still pinned. Mm -hmm. So here, king g8, and now takes on g7. Takes and queen g4. Should be game over. It's very nice how the queen, when moving to g4, also just stops any rook d7 protecting it. Yeah, true. No rook d7 here because it's it's taken. Yeah. And finally, the, the move queen d7. Here he wanted to play queen g4. Again, with a few lines. If queen g4, this is similar to one of the lines we were looking at before. Knight f7 always in between. Take this rook and then take here. Mm. King f7, bishop g6, <laughs> and bishop f5, because he wants to play bishop e6 here and win everything. Yeah. And take on d5 and take on b7. What yeah, else? <laughs> this is just a rook. Book and you're winning another, being up two books. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now moving, but still, it's very convincing. Yeah, I think that everything's dropping here. 
Yeah. Um, what else is there? Okay, if rook takes d6, then queen h4 was the idea. When black can only play rook h6 and you will take it. And then queen h7. Uh, if king g8, queen h7 and bishop g6. Yep. With mate. What if he had, uh, when Sorry. you say, uh, instead of in this line? Yeah. Uh, what if he just plays to... Ah, to g8 here? G8. Right away? Uh, queen h7 anyway, and I think now the mate is on g7. King f7, rook g7. Ah, rook yeah, g7. okay. Takes and queen takes g7. Checkmate. <laughs> and then there's queen d6 here, and with this I think uh, <laughs> we we finish the analysis that he gives. Bishop takes g7. Yeah. Is checkmate. Yeah. So basically, taking this uh, knight on h6 does not work because of knight d6. In the game, Karpov went for c3, but. But now he plays knight f5, and now he has this bishop from b1 that will be very strong. He does lose the other bishop, but here queen g4, and this king is uh, is very open. Mm. And the ratio is the same. I gave up the bishop but took the pawn, so <laughs> still many pieces attacking. Yeah. Here bishop c8 and check. Now, uh, if king g8, the move that he was going to play is king h2. And this is very instructive because actually the point, what you want here to get is knight g5 and checkmate on h7. But the problem is that this rook is uh, hanging with check. If knight g5, you lose the rook and uh, black gets another move. So here he would have played king h2 and then knight g5. <laughs> and uh, rook e1 is not check anymore. No. So rook h6. He had to give up some material. Pawn takes. And here too, king h2 with the same idea that he doesn't want uh, any checks on e1. Queen e5 and knight g5. Did he resign here? No, not yet. <laughs> rook e8. Oh, he's up the uh, material, so it's okay that he plays on. Uh, yeah, two pieces for the rook, no? Yeah. <laughs> and there's an, a, a pawn on b2 that. Yeah, that could, can become, look, could become something dangerous. Bishop f5. This is the only move that avoids mate because what he wants is take on h6. For example, bishop b7. <laughs> he wants this. Queen takes and knight f7. Rook is controlling the g file. The bishop is controlling h7. Game over. <laughs> it's very nice how all these pieces are, just as you mentioned in the beginning, how they're, how active they are. And in different lines, they have different roles. That they are all helps. playing also. No, it's uh, it's funny how white ha doesn't even have a piece that's not participating. They are all attacking. Bishop f5 and now queen h6 anyway. He played. Knight f7. Bishop takes here. Queen g6. And here he took with the bishop, but taking with the rook uh, would have led to mate. And bishop take doesn't lead to mate? Not yet. <laughs> it's funny because in the video, in the video, he he has a reaction to bishop g6, like it was the biggest blunder of, of them all. Bishop g6, this is unforgivable. You just can't take with the bishop here. You have to take with the rook and it's made. This is just complete uh, nonsense, taking with the bishop. Yeah. But of course, you are still winning. Rook a8, there are so many pieces up. What do we have? Okay, only an exchange, but no, sorry. There's two rooks on the board. <laughs> one rook and one exchange. Yeah. Bishop f4, e4, and bishop d5, and here black resigned, I guess because he's losing the pawn on b2, no? If knight yeah. takes, rook b2. Okay, so this was the snack because they, these games were famous and you've probably seen them before. I'm pretty sure uh, you have seen them. 
And I think snack is a good way to describe them. Sorry? <laughs> I think snack is a good way to uh, describe them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was looking at, uh, because I, I wasn't uh, reading the chat before, so I was just uh, strong. Yeah, King H2, very nice move, strong. Prophylaxis in the middle of the attack. Amazing. So let's see more. Let's see. Let's see this uh, game. This is again Kor against Korchnoi. Kasparov is playing white here. Mm -hmm. Shall we give it a try? What would you play here? <laughs> the king looks quite safe on e7, <laughs> at yeah. least for now. Um, maybe knight h5, h4. Knight h4. It's very, it's, it's very primitive. And it is threatening a pawn, and it's not just a pawn, it's threatening a fork. Um, I'm just trying to see, you know, how, because black can move the pawn, so he would have to, I think, I mean, maybe he would have to play something like queen f7. King. And then he could do some sort of rook lift on yes. f3. Okay, Sophie, you're getting very strong in the attack here. Oh, look at you including all the pieces yeah <laughs> two of them at least <laughs> two of them no but this is very Don't strong the last game. No. this is the idea knight h4 and if he goes king f7 rook h3 and you're getting the check on f3 <clears throat> this looks a lot like the game so i'm going to show you what korchnoi played here because he went rook c8 first uh, hitting on c3 so I guess he's hoping for something like uh, knight takes g6, king f7, and then rook c3. Oh. So we play rook h3 first. He did, yes. No, uh, no counter chances for black here. Rook h3, and then rook f3 is still going to happen in case of king f7. But he went g5. Okay. If you started this, you have to go. No, it's knight g6. It's the only move here, otherwise g4. Yeah. Knight f3, g4. So you have to go ahead. King f7, and the knight is trapped. <laughs> what do we do? Oh. Um, if bishop d3, he might take on c3? If bishop d3, he might take on c3. He might, yeah. Um... Could be that we are still much better after that, but rook c3 mm. is what, what he will play. This is a little bit tricky. Um, if he... Could there be some sort of... If now I play rook f3 first, and mm -hmm. then he takes the knight, and then bishop d3. King Han. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> Idle helping me now. Um, and he has to go to h5 and then maybe bringing the rook back to uh -huh. h3 because he can go back to g6, so he has to go to g4. And then where's the checkmate? <laughs> Somewhere there. Checkmate. Rook f3. Yeah, the chat is also suggesting rook f3. Everybody wants to play rook f3. And Sophie is almost showing the mate very close very very close to the mate king g6 check another check king g4 where is the mate now <laughs> uh and uh yeah my bishop has to keep stay on this diagonal yeah and if i play f3 he goes to f4 Mm -hmm. Then I have to play g3, I guess, to keep <clears throat> harassing. But we feel. No, what do I play? Hmm. Yeah, if you play g3, what's wrong with g3? That he takes an f3 or even. What if king f2 here? King f2, I was, I was just going to say that the Twitch chat had it, king f2. Ah. King f2, yeah, nice. Castle? 
Castle, he can take on c3 with check. Yeah, he can so. take on c3, I think, with check. But king f2. You first defend f3 because this was your problem. You couldn't play g3 because of king f3. So now there's no way of stopping g3. Uh, he played g4, but after g3 resigned. This is very mean, resigning here. <laughs> yes, it's a little bit um, bad sportsmanship. Okay, and king g5 and f4. Yeah. Oh, and it's always nice to checkmate with a pawn. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, let's see one with bl black pieces. Let's flip this. Okay. You... Oh, did I? I think, it, okay, it's right side for me now. Yeah, if you can flip that, Sophie, please. It's uh, Kasparov with black here. Yes. Let's try to find a move. It's Asmai Parashvili versus Kasparov here. Played in 2003. What do we do with black? We have a great position, no? It's... Uh... Can, okay, no, we can't. Can we trap the queen? We can't. She can, <laughs> yeah, she I can guess. come back. Okay. Um, what about knight e4? What about knight e4? What about knight e4? Um, he has to take, I guess. Um, I mean, we're threatening the bishop in... It's just a really nice square for the knight if he doesn't take it. Oh, it's funny it. because, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Queen h4. Then the point is he can't play g3 because we take that with the bishop. Mm -hmm. And if he go, he, so he has to try to run. Then the king hunt is started. <laughs> but so that's good sure. news. It means it's knight e4. <laughs> <laughs> If it makes the king run, then it's the move. Um, I'm not so sure what to play after he goes to d1. If we could, maybe we could take the pawn on e4. Uh, or maybe we should play something like... But I don't really know about rook b8. Then if he oh, takes... He's searching that. I don't know how to... Okay, but if you probably see that, uh, I think it's safe to play it in a game because that position does look very good. No, it, sh it should be. There should be something there. As, as Kasparov was saying, uh, you have so many pieces attacking. I really like Sophie how too he... fast, too strong. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> She's right on point today. Oh, did somebody say that? That's so yeah. nice. <laughs> Alicia. <laughs> it's just because I'm trying to do like Kasparov, which is playing the move without calculating all the way, just trying to trust, because that's what Kasparov trust the instinct. So yeah. such a strong intuition. Um, in, if it was a game, I would definitely try to calculate deeper, because I haven't calculated anywhere near to the end yet. No, but uh, if the king's on d1 and you're picking up all the pawns, it's safe to assume that it should work. Um, yeah. Also, because here, it's funny, what I was going to say is that uh, White had just played f3, <laughs> practically stopping the knight from jumping to e4, but he goes knight e4 <laughs> anyway. Um, also, I think he played f3 because he was planning to castle short, uh, and knight g4 was also annoying, no? If, uh, if White would have castled instead of f3. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so here what you have to see is that yeah, you're ahead in development, but white is one move away from castling. And if, if he castles, then he'll probably be fine. Uh, his problems would have been solved. So we have to act fast here. And 94 has to be like, even if you don't see it, it has to be the move because it doesn't allow white to castle because the bishop on d2 will be hanging. Mm. And it opens the king, keeps the king in the center. Queen h4. And on king d1, since you are looking at that line, let's see it. On king d1, I think we can first give a check on g4. Um, because on king c2... Do we take an e4 with check? Yeah. yeah. And then include the rook. Queen e4, maybe rook f2. 
he played g3 in the game and bishop g3 is what you what you thought you had and you do have that move but queen e4 is what uh, kasparov played and it's even stronger i like that better actually just to now keep uh, keep control no? keep the king stuck here yeah now the idea is that if the rook moves away rook g1 then queen f3 Getting to f2. No way to stop queen f2, yeah? No. Nothing else. And if the rook goes to f1, and you can take once, force the king back to e1, and now? Bring in the other rook? Rook f8, yeah. Mate on f1. So here he had to move the king. King e2, the only other move that defends the rook, but here, queen g2, king d3, and bring the rook in. The bishop's hanging, white needs to do something about that. He played queen a5 in the game, uh, he could have tried rook d1 also, mm -hmm. but on rook d1, uh, now rook b8 is nice because what we want rook b a let's say queen a5 to keep an eye on this bishop bishop b4 what we want is to open the second rank and when bishop takes play queen e4 that was the point <laughs> and then take this pawn on e3 yeah that's yeah. unprotected take here and take everything <laughs> all the way until very close to mate at least mate should be well, somewhere now, there <laughs> now we can even just exchange screens and go through <laughs> for the end game <laughs> uh, win enough. this positionally <laughs> yeah so queen a5 directly well now we've seen the idea rook b8 he still wants bishop b4 here so white goes a3 not going to happen, but bishop c7 now. The queen needs to keep the bishop defended, and the problem is that... Uh, do you play rook b3 next move? Uh, no, on queen c3, you have even better than rook b3. Uh, queen, uh, queen e4, yeah. <laughs> Checkmate there already. So he had to take on c7, and then here it's game over. Rook takes b2, and white resigned. Yeah. Rook b3 is coming, and he probably needs... Oh, and queen d2 is coming, no? Uh, here, if he had... No, never mind. We take with the queen if he takes on b2, right? Oh, yeah. Take the queen and then queen, uh, rook b3 afterwards. Yes, yeah, let's show that. Yeah. Take on b2, and here... Yeah, to avoid the checks on the 8th rank, no? Queen takes b2. King d3, and here we have rook b3. With checkmate. Next. Okay, let's move on then. Uh -huh. This is white. Kasparov with the white pieces. Let's flip the board. Okay, this is a uh, very nice game against Artur Yusupov. Kasparov has the white pieces. Looks like we have some pressure with white here, but black also seems quite fine. Uh, looks like he has defended. How can we keep increasing the pressure here? What could we play with white? Um, we could try to include some more pieces in the attack. So the knight is not doing very much right now. But I'm trying to find out if there's like a good, like where I would even put the knight and if it can even get there. Maybe getting a knight to 
H4 would be nice, but it takes quite a, a lot of, like, it takes some time to get it there. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. I was just mm. reading that there's a comment. Uh, do you mind switching off the light? Is it my light or Sophie's light? <laughs> I have a pretty bright li uh, light here. I can try turning that. Uh, I don't. Is it very light? Uh, I don't know if it's that one or the one behind you, I but maybe. <laughs> the one behind me. Is that? I thought Sorry that about was a nice light. I can try doing like this, maybe. <laughs> now it's pretty dark, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going to go like this. It's actually nicer for my eyes. So, <laughs> okay. Um, what? Okay. Sophie, Sophie. Is, I hope this is it the better. one behind her, the one behind her, or the one that's in her head and in her uh, face? I think okay, the one I think behind her. <laughs> I can turn that up. <laughs> Such a nice one though. Gives the atmosphere. <laughs> it's all great. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. Um what were we? Okay, so I think I I concluded that doing this night maneuver is a little bit too slow, if not way too slow. This rook and a1 is also not doing a very impressive job right now, so we could try to include that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should take an g8 first, but taking an g8, taking an g8, then if we include the other rook, he can maybe play rook g7. And I'm not really sure, like, what is the material count even? Is it equal? Yep. No, we're, no? we're, we're down one pawn. We're right? down one pawn, yes. I, I was going <laughs> to go all the way to an end game. Yeah, not going for the end game. I'm going to see if there are any suggestions in the chat. Look, F there is a, a suggestion in the oh. Twitch chat that I saw from oh. own style. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the lights stay as they are. I'm sorry, yeah. no more turning on the light and turning off the lights. <laughs> that's that's all. We need to focus now on this. Yes. <laughs> and this is very difficult position. Okay, let me see. Rook F7. How can you suggest Rook F7? Is this not from White's perspective? It is from White's perspective, but um, is it maybe about uh, a different line? Maybe is it the night the, the line with knight e4? Pawn takes queen e3. No. Knight e4. Knight e4, uh, yeah, that was a suggestion. Sacrificed in an empty square. Yeah, just. Mm, okay. Do we need to, do we have to sacrifice our knight two times in a row here? <laughs> Poor knights. <laughs> they don't seem to live a, a long, happy life with Kasparov. <laughs> uh, the point is then going f5, I guess. Yeah, f5 is the point, yeah. Um, Queen e3. If take, oh, to be, if it doesn't take, then we push it even further, I guess. Yeah, f5 is the point. Queen e3 is a bit slow, I think. And rook f7, you can take the rook. I don't think uh, black can play rook f7 at any point. But maybe, um, maybe queen can come to f8 though. Or there's also d5. So knight e4. Let's see it because this is, is it knight. It is knight e4. It's the only way to break through. And yeah. you do want a knight somewhere on f6 if allowed, no? It's not doing anything in c3, so no. it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so pawn takes yeah. e4, and here f5 uh, is what you wanted to play, and f5 is the right move. But queen e3 here was suggested in the Twitch chat. And here I'm thinking about d5, because then I take back with my knight and defend e4 anyway. So this might be too slow. Too, too slow. Takes here and knight takes d6. Not working, no? But f5. f5 is very strong, Sophie. Very strong move. And it's not so easy to play here with black. In fact... 
black went wrong here. He played rook to g5. What is not that it matters that much, but what does the engine say about this position? Is it winning for white now or is it? No, uh, yeah. I think you, you know what the engine yeah. says. <laughs> Okay. We've uh, we've seen it so many times that um, it's always the same evaluation in these positions, uh, completely equal, zero point zero zero, as you you already know. I but know, yeah. the only move for black to keep that evaluation is queen of eight. Okay. And I'm going to show you the point. Now we want to play f6. Yes. And here and again. Material, right? And win material because we are threatening to take on g8. And when queen takes, you take the rook. And if yeah. king takes, I think we just include uh, the other rook, rook to g1 and bishop g6. Yeah, that is the threat. Rook g8 and if king takes, rook to g1. Mm. But here, black again needs to be to play precisely, and the move, the only move to keep the position more or less balanced is bishop takes f6. And okay. here is the point. Takes, now rook g7. Uh, yes, okay. And here, uh, here we see the point. Rook takes g7 in this line, because if... If I had a, a pawn on e5 and the black bishop on h8, in this position I could have gone queen c2. Mm. Pick up this pawn on e4 and basically win the game. So if I have a pawn here, that works. But I don't have a pawn there and here black can take on f6 and my position is lost. Probably. I have too That's many true. pawns down. Yeah. So this is the point behind the bishop uh, Bishop takes f6 move. Uh, and here white has to go for f7 and play this endgame 97. Which is just zero points. <laughs> Probably. No, I think white still has more chances. No, I have a dangerous pawn on f7. More active pieces. I guess queen f4 is coming next. In this position, I would play queen f4. Mm. To take on e4. Probably knight f5. And it's not clear um, if I can ad uh, keep advancing my pawn. It's probably black and hold this. But I would still say that white is pressing. Yeah. But in the game, queen f8 did not happen. Rook g5 was played, and this move will lose. He takes and advance. Where is the rook going? No. And he can't go for queen f8 again. No, because then we take and we go down and make a queen. And All right, that's make... one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Take and uh, and e8. I was also considering queen e3 after queen f8 because the rook still is still trapped. No. Yeah, that's true. You can go for either either line, I guess. Take on e7, take on f2, e8, there is no check. That seems to work. Here, and it takes here, I go e8. Can you refresh the board? I don't know if yes. you... Uh, Pawn yeah. takes e7, queen f2, e8. Completely winning, no? Yeah, agreed. You can just take the rook. He played king h6 in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. to which we take the rook, queen takes, and bishop f7. Play d6, bring the other rook, and the king is still uh, not safe on h6. He tried g4 here, and now bishop e6. Queen takes e6. And the point is the queen gets in, queen h4, and black resigned after this move, because now if king g7, 
we go rook f6, right? Yeah. And queen h6 uh, is coming next. Queen h6, queen g6, rook g6, and it's checkmate. It's funny because this happens in many positions of uh, uh, in Kasparov's games in a in a position like this where <laughs> nothing is where that much is happening, <laughs> where maybe Black has just defended. Suddenly, <laughs> everything explodes. Like here with ninety four, such a Mozart, yeah, nice, uh, nicely put. Such a Mozart, yes. <laughs> it's a nice comparison. I think we have. Uh, we can look at one more game oh, no don't ruin okay so here Kasparov is black let's flip the board this is a game yes. against Nigel short and I think it was in one of their yeah exactly there was a match a while ago in San Luis uh, it was a blitz game but nevertheless it was a fun game so I included it here what what do we play here with black what's our first move There is something about going g4. There's something about um, going d4? Ah, g4, I'm sorry. To okay. have this, like, there are some things where you could, uh, not straight away, but then if the bishop could, okay, it's a little bit ambitious, or maybe just, or maybe knight g4, that's nicer. Okay. <laughs> knight g4, because then we actually threaten this and this. Yes. Knight g4, the first move. Get the get the queen playing. Get the knight playing. Knight to e4 was the, another suggestion, but knight e4, knight e4 is good. Uh, it's another good move, but I probably have to take it on e4. And you take with the d-pawn, and that is still a very good position for black. This was suggested in Twitch. Takes, takes. Good enough for black, but knight g4 is crushing. Knight g4 here. See, live for chess as he saw uh, Nigel Short and Kasparov play in a London nightclub. That would have been a really great experience. <laughs> Let me just see. Okay. Um, so, Knight g4, what do we do here? King g1 with white. Really have to run out of the threats. Queen h5 and rook e1. Time to think. What do we do next? So just trying to see if the obvious thing works here. <laughs> Going home, check, and looks like he escapes. Yeah. Unless we can throw in a check, but it doesn't because the knight is still protecting this rook. So if he goes here, we still oh yeah doesn't look like we're burning it. Still defending. Uh, yeah. True. So it would be nice if we could play rook e8, but he can just take it then. Uh -huh. hmm. Magnus attacking games also seem so perfect. Yeah, the problem uh, with Magnus attacking games is that they are few, no? <laughs> you don't see it that are, often. Fewer attacking games nowadays. Sorry? Generally, there are fewer. Uh, ah, attacking sure, attacking game. game. Well, we ha we still have Dubov to to give a show. Yeah. Mm. I'm really not sure how to. Uh, I've got to do something about these mm -hmm. escape scares. Yeah. Um, you have to okay, do something the... about cutting the king. Uh, you are considering cutting... rookie eight, but rookie eight does not yeah. work. Yeah, so maybe like I could, if I could even use my uh, light squared bishop to, I don't know, but I, I can't get, seem to get it in a position where it can really cut off um, effectively. Then I should move the bishop uh -huh. in order to, mm, okay, I'm just, can I, I'm just gonna get in this trash, I have marked way too many. Then I should move this bishop with the point of putting a book on e8. Nice. Bishop oh. d7 is also suggested by own style in Twitch. Very strong move, I think, Bishop d7. Huh? 
I it's pro it probably came natural to Kasparov, but I find it, it difficult. Slow, yeah, but if it's working, it's it is because once you put a rook on e8, it's checkmate. Queen h2 cannot be stopped. And also, we haven't sacrificed anything in this position. <laughs> we haven't, so no, that's, that's important. It. No. So yeah. it's time to sacrifice something because on bishop d7, we are actually allowing queen d5 and queen takes d7. Uh, we are sacrificing yeah. the bishop, but at least yeah. at least the queen then goes away. It's uh, not protected if he takes. Sorry, the, the, the what? The pawn? And if he takes the bishop on d7, then he, he's no longer protecting d2. Yeah, that is the point. And funnily enough, this was a blitz game, which makes it even more impressive. Bishop d7. Probably just to include all the pieces. The rook on a8 is not participating in the attack, so you want it here. Mm. Um, queen takes d5 here. White took on d7. And of course, now you start giving the checks. King f1. And what do we do here? Mm. Maybe there's more than just one good move, but. In queen h1, and then question is if we if he is uh, running away. Yeah, I guess not because I think in that position you have this move. Yes. Rook oh eight. yeah. And knight it's f2. Yeah, and knight f2. Is also coming, maybe. They are both uh, happening. Yeah. So queen h1 probably works. Uh, anyway in this position but why let the king escape <laughs> bring ah, the rook okay. first rook d8 queen takes b7 and now he takes here on g3 mm. he want to, wants to mate here and the king is not going anywhere because there's a bishop hanging on d3 that we can also take with check I mean if king e2 uh, queen d3 is mate so rook e2, have to stop the mate, now he takes the bishop, takes on f4, king e1, otherwise uh, it's mate with queen h2 and queen h1, yeah, mm. king g1, queen h2. So king e1 here, king f1. And here, queen h4. Wants to mate on h1. Yeah. So the only thing to do is to play g3 and open the queen. Rook takes g3. Knight e6. We have to stop the mate. It's careful here. Don't let queen g7 happen in this position. So rook g8. <laughs> Just small prophylaxis. It's like very funny way how all of Black's pieces are in those like in the G and H file. It's funny, yes. It it keeps happening. No, they are all playing. <laughs> yeah. Somehow this this rook was also uh, participating before. Now uh, it needs to stay and defend the bishop. But it's funny yeah, how they are all attacking. Whites uh, are not all defending. So he took no, them all over. And check. Knight f3. Check here. King e3. And now followed mate, knight e5. Which did happen in the game. <laughs> so, it's a nice one. Uh, yeah. Beautiful mate in the middle of the board. If king f2, here after queen f4, there's also king f2, but this is also mate. Okay, a little longer, but something similar will happen because here knight d4 looks strong again. And if king e1, we want to take on e2. And then checkmate here. And if king g1, we still want to take on e2, but with the knight, and that's also checkmate. <laughs> but it's not in the middle of the board, so this is more to the point of our, <laughs> of our series. <laughs> It's true. Let's finish with this one on the board rather than uh, king on g1. What is that? 
And I think we can stop here. We've seen so many games. What about rook f7 instead of rook g8 in, um, in the position after knight e6? I think rook g8 was not the only move. Uh, rook f7 might have worked. Not sure right now, but we can look. Rook f7. In this position. Ah, okay, because what you want is queen h1 mate. If, uh, if queen takes f7. I think it also works. Rook f7 in this position. Queen f7, queen h1 is mate. I don't see why not. Then it should be because of queen a8. But I think king h7 solves the problem. Queen a8, yeah. queen h7. This should work. This looks prettier than rook g8. <laughs> it looks like a position where there should be more than one good move. Yeah, it's king h7 yeah. here. No, so rook f7 should also work. So yeah, it's it was just uh, probably in, in a blitz, rook g8 is what was easier to play. Uh, and that's what he played. But rook f7 is also winning. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, this is, I think, everything for today. There are so many good games of Kasparov. So if you just go and search for his games, you will find uh, many good attacking games and you will learn how to attack because he was a, he's a great attacker. Just... I actually started seeing some of his, uh, like a few months ago, I went through some of his game from, I think it was from 67. Or oh, maybe it was in 76. I think it was from the year 76. That makes more sense, right? He was very young. He was like 13 years old, the games that I was looking at, and he was just playing so aggressive. It was very nice. Yeah, I, I, I know he has many good games. It's, yeah. it's a player to study if you want to, to learn how to attack everything. Include all yeah. the pieces, intuition, uh, calculation, because I'm, I'm sure that, well, he says that he didn't calculate, but I'm sure that he he was calculating <laughs> many of the things. Yeah, I think he was just trying to be a little bit cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I, just didn't I didn't calculate, but then I show you all this huge line that I actually saw. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, just a machine. Um, next week, we are going to look at Judith. So it's going to be another fun Ooh. stream, I think. Oh, nice. it's, I think it's nice because we are celebrating Women's Day also. So it's, it makes sense to have her next week. That's true. That's the 8th, March 8th, right? Yeah, that's on Monday. It's around that time. It's perfect. Yeah, but we are going to have our stream on Wednesday, though, next week. Um, because Tuesday is taken. So sorry about keeping the <laughs> about keep changing the type the, the dates. It's uh, we are trying to to make the schedule of Chess Twenty Four work. So um, we are going to see you guys on Wednesday at the same time, three p.m. CET. And also, if you want to have some fun, me and Sophie have st started solving some exercises together. We had our first stream on my Twitch channel last week. And we were planning to, to do it again this Friday, if you yeah, guys Friday. want to join. Friday night. Yes. Something like uh, 7.30 p.m., uh, 7.30 or no, wait. Yeah, 7.30 CT. I think if that works for you, Sophie, would be would be a good time. Works for me. It's good to get to uh, solve some puzzles. <laughs> they are not easy though, but they are fun. <laughs> we are trying not to. Easy. Not easy, but we learn a lot by sol solving them. Yeah. So uh, my channel. If you search for my name, you're going to find me here on Twitch. I I can't. Uh... Oh, there it is. Thank you, Perpetual Stalemate. That's my my Twitch channel. And we're going yeah. to. We are going to, to stream on Friday. Funny how March 1st and March 8th are always on the same weekday. Yeah, funny. It's because maybe because it's seven, uh, <laughs> seven days apart. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is the, the stream. And I also plan to, to make some other streams uh, on my Twitch channel. But I'm just getting started and I'm trying to work my schedule out. So stay close. Yeah. <laughs> I will announce them on my Instagram page, though. So thank you guys for 
joining us today, remember to visit coaches.com where you will find me as a coach if you guys need some help in, uh, <laughs> uh, in your training. Um, and uh, go up and follow me on my Twitch channel, uh, Instagram, everywhere. You, you guys know it. <laughs> I can really, really recommend getting a coach. And Raluca is a very, very perfect coach for me. And Thank you, very Sophie. Happy. <laughs> I think uh, the chemistry is, uh, is obvious. We are getting along very well. Sophie's making uh, great progress, I think. I might even come visit Raluca. Yay! In, uh, so maybe in a couple of weeks you'll see us streaming together, actually. <laughs> yeah, if everything falls into place, that would be so great. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you very much. Have a great week. See you next uh, Wednesday. Bye. Oh, Friday. <laughs> Bye. Friday. First Friday. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.